It's another day and I bought yet another car from the auction block. This one, a fifth generation Honda Prelude. Hey, 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 how's it going? Do it yourselfers. So if you're a subscriber to my channel, you probably already know that I own a fourth generation Honda Prelude. And in fact, those are my favorite Honda Preludes. But this fifth generation or this 1999 Honda Prelude came across on the auction block and I just couldn't help myself. And I think I got it for a good price. We'll go over later on how much I paid for this car what I plan to do with it, what's wrong with it, what needs to be fixed specifically on this car. But also we'll go over all the engine, transmission specs, uh, what are these cars known for having issues with. We'll cover all of those items. So if you're ever interested in buying a fifth generation Honda Prelude, you know exactly what to look for. All right, so first let's get the specs out of the way. So these fifth generation Preludes come with a 2.2 liter dual overhead cam. VTIC just kicked in your engine. These engines produce 197 horsepower and 156 pound feet of torque. The VTEC engages at 5200 RPMs and it's got a red line of 7400 RPMs. And on these cars we have an option for a four-speed automatic transmission or a five-speed manual transmission. Also in the Japanese market you could get these fifth generation Preludes with the four-wheel steering system that Honda had that you could get for the third and fourth generation Honda Preludes but unfortunately that's not available for or wasn't available for the US market. Also in the US market, there's two models you could get these Preludes in, the base model, which is this guy right here. Also, you could get them in the SH model, which stands for super handling. Now, the difference between the base and the SH model is that the SH model comes with what's called ATTS, which is Active Torque Transfer System. All right, so obviously these cars are front wheel drive and basically they, what the ATTS or the Active Torque Transfer System tries to do is to compensate for the understeering that these cars have. Basically, through a series of sensors and clutches, the ATTS system senses which wheel needs torque and sends and directs more power to that wheel to improve traction and handling around turns and corners. So basically, if you race a base model Honda Prelude versus an SH model Honda Prelude, all else being equal, if they're going on a straight line, they'll probably be pretty equal. But if you're going around turns and curves, this H model has a clear advantage. All right, so now let's get to the nitty gritty of the engine. So these engines have an aluminum block and the engine code for these, if you're wondering, is H22A4, as you can see. So an aluminum block is obviously lighter, but it's also, as you may know, if you're a subscriber to my channel, a softer metal, which makes it susceptible to developing issues if you ever overheat these engines. So yeah, as you may know, if you ever overheat or severely overheat your car, you could develop head gasket problems or you could blow a head gasket, you could damage your cylinder head, warp the cylinder head. But again, since the block on these, car, on these engines is also aluminum, you could warp the block, top of the block, or worse, crack the block, as it's somewhat common, definitely on the fourth generation Preludes with the H23, and the H22 engines, but obviously in the fifth generation too, since this one has the H22 engine. So aluminum, again, softer metal, you will severely overheat it, you could warp it or worse, crack it. If you crack your engine block, you're gonna have to replace the engine. However, if you simply blow a head gasket or warp your cylinder head, you could repair that somehow. But you know, there's usually not a whole lot that can be done with a cracked block unless you, you, know, you get in there really deep, you get involved, spend a lot of money, in which case it's usually not even worth chasing, you might as well replace your engine. Now, one clear sign on these cars of a cracked block is that you will get engine oil into your cooling system. When you blow a head gasket, usually it's the other way around. You get coolant inside your engine mixed with your engine oil. And then you check that obviously by checking the engine oil and you see that milky residue that you usually see when the coolant is mixed with engine oil. But when you crack the block, definitely on these cars, you will get oil get into your cooling system. And that's because obviously your engine oil is under more pressure than, your, than the coolant in your cooling system. So if there's a crack in the engine block between an engine oil galley and your, let's say, coolant passage, engine oil will go from that galley into the cooling system, from the higher pressure side to the lower pressure side. So if you ever buy one of these cars, make sure you open the radiator cap and check the coolant. Make sure there's no oil in there. But even more important than that, make sure you check your coolant reservoir. Make sure there's no oily coolant residue on this and that's because sometimes shady sellers will fix that problem thinking it was a bad head gasket but then realize that they did not fix the problem and still oil is getting into the cooling system they'll go and replace the coolant clean things off here and so when you check the old coolant here you won't see it mixed but if you check the reservoir they usually miss that or they don't know they have to clean that too but if you check that you'll see that oil mixed with coolant oh, and by the way just in case you haven't noticed the cylinder head is very clean it's been rebuilt and replaced or replaced recently. 
but luckily I do not find any sign of, uh, you know, oil mixed with coolant or vice versa. All right, so something you need to be aware of is that these engines are interference engines and they come with a timing belt. So if the timing belt breaks on these cars due to excessive wear, the pistons are gonna hit the top of your pistons. At the very least, you're gonna need to rebuild the top end of your engine. At the worst, you're gonna need a new engine. So make sure the person you buy this car from has replaced the timing belt on time. And if not, you go ahead and inspect and replace it if necessary. All right, so there's a couple of other issues you really need to be aware of if you wanna buy a fifth generation Prelude. And these are specific for the year 1997 for some reason. So in that year, there was a couple of manufacturer defects. One, if you had an automatic transmission, the TCM would go bad prematurely, causing check engine lights and other drivability issues related to your transmission. Uh, the other is that if you have a manual transmission for that year, the, the shift fork was bad and caused grinding into fifth gear. And last but not least for the year 1997, and this one would cause the most amount of damage to your engine is that the oil plug or the seal for the balance shaft would pop out randomly, your engine would lose oil pressure, and when you lose oil pressure, you have catastrophic engine failure. As far as I know, these three problems that I mentioned for the year 1987 do have recalls on them. So, you know, if you buy a 1987 Prelude that's in good condition and it's running, the odds are that the previous, one of the previous owners at least addressed these issues and had them fixed, but nonetheless, you wanna, you know, check with the owner, make sure that these have been addressed, especially that oil seal for the balance shaft. Uh, make sure that's been addressed before you go on and purchase these. But also there's other problems with uh, 1999 to 2001 Honda Preludes with the automatic transmission and it is the automatic transmissions for those years simply did not last long. They were weaker than you know previously made automatic transmissions by Honda and actually if you know that's those are the years that the uh, Honda started having problems with their trans automatic transmissions. You know it went to the Honda Civics, the Accords, the Acuras also so on and so forth. So if you can help it Try to avoid the automatic transmission, especially for, 99, for 1999 to 2001 Honda Preludes. Now again, this is a 1999 Honda Prelude with a manual transmission, so I have a lot less things to worry about. All right, so what's wrong with this car specifically? How much did I pay for it at the auction and what I plan to do with it? So this car, you might be interested to find out, doesn't have much wrong with it. There's, you know, it dry, runs and drives fine. I've driven it around for about five, five or 10 miles, doesn't overheat, nothing weird, no misfires. You know, it runs and drives smooth. There's uh, some minor uh, noise coming from the suspension. You know, the brakes need servicing. On a, you know, it needs minor work here and there, but you know, the engine and transmission seem to be in decent shape. And in fact, you know, someone's taking good care of this to a point where even though this was an auction car, and this is rare, if you, for those of you that don't know, it's very rare for this to happen, that this car has a good battery. Let me start it up for you guys to take a listen. As you guys can hopefully tell, this thing runs pretty smooth. Now, as far as the body, the body is also in pretty decent shape. This uh, left front fender has been resprayed and it's got some cracking in this area, some paint damage in this area. And you know, that cracking usually doesn't happen on factory painted cars. But overall, the body is straight minus the trunk. As you may see, it does not light up, line up quite evenly on both sides. There's more space on that side compared to this side. However, we have matching VIN numbers on the trunk, also on this rear bumper cover as well. So the odds are this car has probably not been in a severe rear end collision. Besides that, the paint is in good shape. The clear coat is still there. It's not flaking or anything. There's some dings on this fender, but as far as dings and dents go, you know, that's more or less about it. And that's especially impressive since it's got such high miles, as you may be able to tell, it's got 245,000 miles on it. And as far as how much did I pay for this car? I paid $2,644, including all the fees at the auction. I paid another 120 to have it towed here. So that makes it $2,764. That's how much I'm in this car right now. It does need registration, but you know, one year registration for these cars shouldn't cost more than 150 or so dollars. Now, as far as what I'm gonna do with it, funny enough, I'm gonna keep this one and probably sell the fourth generation Prelude because the fourth generation Prelude has a non VTEC engine and it has the automatic transmission. Whereas this one obviously has the VTEC engine, but also the manual transmission. The only thing I don't like about this one is the color. You know, not a big fan of the color white on these preludes, but hey, you know, at least it's got aftermarket wheels in decent shape. 
But yeah, realistically, I'm gonna fix this one up, fix the fourth generation Prelude up, and then decide then, because as you may know, the shop I just built isn't gonna pay for itself. So if uh, you know watching me fix these cars sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And also check out these other related videos that I put links to on this side of the screen. You can check out my other videos in the description box and in the suggestion box as well. All right, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.